Hey guys, it's Mr. Palma here. Uh, happy, what's today, Tuesday? Happy Tuesday! So today for our life skills class, um, we are back in my kitchen. And, um, and today I'm going to talk to you guys about the importance of food prepping, uh, why we do it, why it's important, especially now, and what this is going to do for you as you're growing up. So, you guys are about 13 years old now, or at least you'll be turning 13 soon, and that means at some point you guys are going to learn how to cook. Cooking is super important, not just because it's fun and it's creative, but um, it's essential for life. And if you know how to meal prep and you know how to, you know, do that kind of thing, um, it's going to help you stay healthier and also help you with some time management as you get older. So today, I'm going to use, I'm going to uh, meal prep a couple of things. I'm going to meal prep some cauliflower rice, and then I'm going to teach you guys how to make some mashed potatoes, and I'll tell you what I'm going to put with it. Um, I'm doing this because that way for dinner tonight, I'll already have it together. So that's kind of time management. Um, the cauliflower rice, I'm going to prep and get it all together and ready, and that's important for a couple of reasons. Number one, well, we're in the middle of a pandemic right now, and so for me, I think it's very important to minimize the amount of times I have to go to the grocery store or just to make sure that I'm not wasting any food. Um, and so I went to the open air market by my house the other day, and I picked up two heads of cauliflower. I love cauliflower. You can make anything with it. What I personally really like to make is a cauliflower rice. And so I will show you how to prep that, use a food processor, uh, saute and um, uh, cut garlic and onion, and uh, what knives do what when you're working in the kitchen, and, uh, and how to store stuff. So, um, oh, and then make mashed potatoes. Cause Everyone loves mashed potatoes, and um, it's a fun process, not too hard to do. So, yeah, that's about where we're going to start. So I guess we could start with uh, the potatoes, just because I already have some out. So, let's see here. Okay, so when you make potatoes, you're going to need a couple of things. Number one, a handy-dandy potato masher, um, or you can use whatever. Um, I had a friend who used a mason jar once. Whatever you have in your house that will help you uh, smash potatoes. The second thing you're going to need is a clean and prepped surface. So I use just a regular knife that I have in my kitchen. Um, oh, I almost forgot. You need a potato peeler. So this is a potato peeler. Um, and then you need a place to cut all the skins off. You don't necessarily need to cut all the skins off. I do, unless you're making a dirty mashed potato. Um, and then you need, this is a handy dandy, just a baking thing, but uh, we inherited this from Tony's mom and I always make homemade mashed potatoes in it. And then you need like your seasonings. So for me, I use obviously garlic. Um, oh, this adobo, if you have never used adobo, well, then you are missing out because it is a fantastic seasoning. I use paprika, a little bit of cumin, um, almond milk, because again, that's, uh, that's our preferred thing around here is almond milk. And again, you're trying to use up what you have in your house, so the whole point is not having to go out. Um, three cloves of garlic, sometimes more if you are like me and you love garlic, which I, I do. And then I throw some onion in there. So this is how I save my onions too. I just wanted to cut off a piece for, I think I made an omelet the other day. Anyway, so I'll show you how to cut that. But the first thing we are going to do is I will show you how to cut up the potatoes. So, oh, and then later on you're going to need a mixer. So what I do is first thing, you want to wash all your potatoes. And again, the reason why we are doing this is use up food um, in your house and showing how to meal prep and just regular cooking skills that you're going to need to learn 
um, later in life. So, all right. Step one, take your knife and we're just going to cut out some of the main impurities that you may see. Um, one of the reasons I wanted to do this is because I noticed my potatoes were have been sitting for a couple days and I didn't want them to go to waste. So you take your potato peeler and always peel away from you. Because you don't want to get hurt. And take out any brown spots that you may see. And it's not hard. And just go back through. Make sure you got everything. Oops. <laughs> Sometimes potatoes are slippery, especially right after you wash them. So they may go flying a little bit. Alright, and then you have a uh, done potato. And you're just going to put the potato right in your pot that's already out there. Because when we boil them, we fill it up with water and boil them and, uh, and they're good to go. Alrighty. And if there's something you guys want to learn how to make and um, you don't necessarily know how, drop a comment down below and we can go through that together. And uh, I can do a demo on that. Um, pretty much anything you want. I'm hoping these are helpful to you. I. Uh, I wish I learned how to cook more when I was your age. When I was a kid, my mom did most of the cooking. Well, so did my dad, but my mom cooked. I could make basic things, but then when it came time uh, later on to uh, really learn how to start cooking when I was in college, I realized there was a lot. I only knew how to make certain things, and I had to learn a lot. And uh, some recipes I learned along the way was... A lot of trial and error and figuring it out so if any of these help you for when you're growing up well I hope they are and there are faster ways to do this but whatever I am peeling and doing that so it's fine now this recipe is one that's just for about 10 potatoes which is fine with me because <laughs> that's about all I had and I can't eat mashed potatoes so we'll have mashed potatoes in our house for a good couple of days which is fine with me it means one less side I need to make later and what I'm going to do is I am going to prepare this with um, um, a pork loin that I have and pork loin, you know, is uh, also like chicken, you know, they're very easy to prepare. I'll usually throw mine in with some sauce, cover it in the oven for 350 degrees, and um, and then that's usually all you need to do. With uh, chicken, you want to cook it to 180, or no, excuse me, 160. Pork um, is 180. And that's when you know it's uh, food safe and good to go. And that is just about that. Alrighty. Fantastic. <laughs> Alright, and I will pause this so you guys don't have to watch me peel potatoes for <laughs> a good 10 minutes more. Which is what will have to happen. Hey guys, alright, so as you can see, we are not done with the potatoes. The peels are here, which is great for an easy uh, discard. And now, the potatoes are nice and peeled. Wow, you can't see it. There we go. In the, uh, in the pot. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fill it with water so we can boil them. And I cheat a little bit. I use, um, I wait until my sink gets really hot. 
and uh, and then I'll use that water. So that way when I put it on the stove, it doesn't have to boil as long. Now the potatoes are going to boil for about maybe 10, 15 minutes. I don't have that many in there. So while that's boiling, what we're going to do is um, we're going to prepare our garlic and our onion that we want to incorporate into the recipe. I just took the pot and I just have water running and get the potatoes all covered. When it's starting to get warm, I can feel it on the sides because it's a metal pot. Alright, that'll be enough water. Alrighty. So, I'm just going to let this water heat up for a minute. I can take that off because I don't need that lid. It's a gas though, so sometimes it's a smidge finicky. So while that's going, what I'm going to do is move on to the next thing. Ugh. And that is going to be chopping onion and garlic. Now I'm just going to grab a couple more uh, cloves of garlic because I love garlic and I know I'm going to need it for my next recipe too. Now when you're making mashed potatoes, there's a whole bunch of different ways you can do it. Um, you can you make a smashed garlic, which is more like a paste. Um, you can um, mince it, which is what I'm going to do. Um, you can put the whole clove right on the... Um, and saute it in the pan that way and then smash it at the end and that's pretty good too so I usually want you know three to four cloves of garlic so that's what I have and I'm just going to grab my wooden spoon if you don't have a wooden spoon in your kitchen well that's okay use whatever you have just because I want to get that ready for my potatoes Alright, and so when I'm cutting onion and uh, garlic, I like to use this knife. And the reason why is because it's curved on the bottom like this, so you can actually rock back and forth with it, which actually helps make the prep quicker. So um, when you're chopping garlic, you want to chop off the ends first. So get those nice and cut off and then it'll start to peel so you take this and you peel that away so then all that's left is the clove and you're good and I just discard that right away because again small spaces you want to be able to uh, have a quick cleanup you don't have to do it all at the end. I was thankful I did that when I was baking yesterday because uh, uh, that would have been quite a lot of cleanup to wait until the end of the day to do. So we got two and I like a very garlicky potato so I'm going to add an extra clove when the recipe itself only calls for three cloves. You can never really have too much garlic and I also have a garlic paste I'm going to use too which I, I like a, you know, I like a spicy things. So I'm going to balance out my ratio of um, paprika and cumin based on how this all tastes together. So now that those are prepped, I just take my knife and I chop up like this and I just move it slowly along. And I'm going to do that for all of them. And again, that rocking motion helps you go quicker. Again, you want to be careful. Make sure you don't get hurt in the process. And obviously, I am not the quickest. I will never claim to be a chef. Um, Tony is much faster at this than me. But I guess I did not grow up with my mom being a chef. So this is just where we're at. <laughs> but that's the basic idea. And then, because I have all these pieces, I can take the knife and I can chop them like this. 
So I can just bring them all up around and just slide them through and it'll rock. Mm. I love the smell of garlic in my house. I don't know about you, but I mean, I'm Italian, so I grew up where, you know, the smell of garlic usually had something to do with the sauce that it was making. And I, I thought about making a sauce to show you guys, but, you know, the spirit of meal prepping, it's all about using what you have or, you know, what may be going bad. And so I just, I didn't want the rest of my potatoes to go bad. So I thought that would be a good lesson. And I'll show you how to meal prep anyway, because once the meal is cooked, I'll show you how it usually is divided. And, and you've seen me take uh, containers into work a whole bunch of times. And now I guess you'll know how I, uh, how I do it. Because it does. It, it makes lunches easier. It makes dinners easier. I'm really busy during the week. I don't know about you guys. And so it helps me be more prepared. Alright, so I'm going to discard these peels. And uh, move this good garlic, which is all ready for me, over to the side. Because I saute my uh, onions and garlic together. Which brings me to the onion. And I'm looking over at my water with the potatoes. It's starting to boil, which means we're on the right track. I'm going to save that baggie because I may use it. Because in my next recipe with the cauliflower rice, I also save that. So when you're cutting an onion, the first thing I do is I cut off the top and the bottom like this. And then I take this and I, you peel back that top layer of the onion. You don't want to use that. And the reason why is because there's a membrane on it that is actually where a lot of, um, if you ever chopped an onion, they say you cry. Well, I always cry when I chop onions. So I'm really hoping that I don't this time. Otherwise, I'm sure I'll never hear the end of it when we're back in session. But if you run some cold water while you're chopping, um, it helps break up some of those uh, fumes. Um. Oh. oh, it still didn't work all that well. I still tear up. Ah! <laughs> but you know what? When you have um, onion, it just, it really elevates mashed potatoes and it elevates whatever it is cooking. So they're worth it. I guess I haven't quite learned uh, the trick. Ah! <laughs> but the nice thing about onion is they're layers. So as you're chopping, the layers will fall apart a little bit. Pause this for a second. Alright guys, so I had to go wipe my eyes. How embarrassing is that? Anyway, so I got my onion chopped down into pretty decent chunks. And what I'm going to do, just because I'm putting it in mashed potatoes, and so I want them to be, you know, not too, uh, too big of pieces, I'm just going to run them through quickly with my food processor. Most food processors have a safety feature where the little dot has to line up with um, the little dot on the other side, otherwise it won't work. So, it, just helps. it helps you get those nice fine pieces super quick. Alrighty, so now that's where that should be. And if you look over here, our potatoes are boiling pretty well. So now I'm just going to saute these uh, peppers and on or excuse me, not peppers. Whew, I wish they were peppers. No. Um, the garlic and onion really quick. 
Now, it's a small bit, so I'm just going to use my small skillet. And uh, when I'm baking, I usually use coconut oil. But you can use whatever you have. Butter. I just like the flavor of coconut oil. And it's, um, it's pretty good for you. The only thing is, you'll learn about this. Oils, different oils have different uh, temperatures at which they burn quicker. So when I use coconut oil... Um, it'll burn quicker than other things that you use. So those potatoes are probably good soon. Um, yeah, what I may do is check on these and then, uh, and then saute just so that way you can watch me do it so you know how. Yeah, now that still needs a couple more minutes. Alright, that's no problem. So, what I'll do, so I can show you. Uh, how do I do this? I ask myself a good question. Um, I don't know, let me check. Alright guys, so it's super precarious, but I think I figured it out. So, what I'm going to do is I am just gonna light this front burner and get this oil melted and when I'm sauteing I uh, I just use spatula like this this is my favorite one actually and uh, while that oil is doing its thing I'm just gonna take a bowl and get my garlic and my onion into the bowl Now because of the small size, it'll be ready pretty quickly. Alright, um, so I'm just going to turn the heat down just a little bit. Now that the oil's melted, you don't want it to uh, start popping too much. If you hear that, that means it's hot. All right. Now, all that. And now, when I'm cooking, sometimes what I'll do, especially for peppers, or I keep saying peppers. I usually make peppers and onions. I think that's why I'm saying that. I'll take some adobo. And I'll just sprinkle it over the top. Just because I like the flavor. You can just push this around. And you just want the onion to be translucent or a brown color and the garlic to also be more browny. And that will be done pretty soon and so will the potatoes actually. So if I plan this right they should be done at the same time. And because of how small it is, they look kind of like a mash right now. But that's good because I want creamy potatoes that still have that uh, the flavor of the peppers and onions. Oh my gosh, I keep saying peppers. What the heck? Okay. Um, the garlic and onions. Alright, and I'll just let that uh, sit for a second, just so it can get a little warmer. Now, being able to do this is really important because chopping up some fresh garlic and onion is simple, but it can really heighten whatever it is you're making. So, usually whenever I cook, I have garlic and onions. Um, in the recipe. And sometimes it's uh, even simpler than this. Sometimes I'll just take it all, put it in a pot, 
and uh, throws, or excuse me, a baking dish, throw some um, aluminum foil over the top and let it all bake together. And that's when you make your stews and stuff, and that's always really good too. Those potatoes are looking pretty much done. And these are starting to, they're browning up. I'm just gonna not move them for a second. Oh, the cameo of my cat in the background. Easy butt. You wanna say hi to the kids? You wanna say hi to my kids? No? Hi, honey. Hi, baby. She's my little helper during the day. She doesn't understand why I'm home all the time now. But, uh, she's happy about it. <laughs> Alright, so these are pretty good. I will try it. Hmm. Yep, just needs to be a little bit softer. But the flavor's there. So I'll just let that sit for a minute. And the potatoes are good, so while I am doing that, I'm just going to reach in here and grab my colander. So I can get that water ready to dump for the potatoes. I usually like my garlic a little more browned, but since I'm putting it in potatoes, oh no, yep, it's just about there. And you can kind of tell which pieces are the garlic and which ones are the onion because the garlic, it does get browner and the uh, onion will get more translucent before it browns on the edges. And that's when you know you are good to go. Mmm. Oh, I love the smell of this. Cooking, baking, can just make you happy. There's a reason I had to go on the keto diet, and it's because of how much I love food. <laughs> Alright, so that's good. You probably can't see it, but it does have um, that browned texture some of the the garlic pieces do and then the onion is more translucent I didn't want it burned because I still wanted it to be soft enough to be mixed in and incorporated well with the potatoes so that can sit there for a second I'm going to move this camera back over where it was on my countertop and go on to the next step here Alrighty. Alright guys, so we're good and as you noticed I have prepped a few more things and you will see why in a minute. In the meantime, I am going to grab my handy dandy thingamabobs so I don't burn myself because the potatoes are just about done. So I am going to drain the water. I have my colander in the sink so when I pour the water It'll just go right into the colander, and if I accidentally miss and some potatoes fall in, that's okay. Alright, so those are good and ready for smashing. <sighs> now... going to face that so you can see what in the world I'm doing. Now it's the fun part. You take your masher and you start mashing potatoes. Oh, oops, I forgot to tell you. You should keep this on medium heat. Now I, oops, I boiled the potatoes for a while. So, they all mesh pretty easily, which is kind of what I wanted. 
I didn't want to have to do too much work. <laughs> Because things kind of rattle sometimes when you're in a small space. Alright. And now, the potatoes are smashed. Now, I'll take my uh, blender to this in a second. But, I'll pop this up so you can see. So, before they were potatoes, and now they are not. <laughs> so, I take my handy dandy one spoon and I'll just mix it around a little bit. Because I don't want the ones on the bottom to burn. Again, this was hot because we just dumped stuff. So, be careful. And as you um, scrape up stuff from the bottom, you may need see some clumps. And you may want to take your uh, smasher to that again. That's no problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to add one cup of almond milk. And our spices. Here's our almond milk. Back. Now we're going to gradually add this. So I'm going to put about half in right now. Now I'm going to add my spices. So I have cumin and paprika. So I want to have two teaspoons of cumin and one teaspoon of paprika. I'm going to do this first. One. Two. By the way, these are half teaspoons, so I did put the right amount in. And now we're going to put some cumin in here. One. Two. Alright, so that's one. Three. Four. And... I also add some salt and pepper, and this is where you can improvise a little bit. So I want some salt on my mashed potatoes. So we'll do that. And, um, oh, aha, uh -huh. this is great. This is stirring garlic paste. So I love this stuff. I use it a lot. So I'm not going to put a lot in because I am still going to use my mixture that I made, but it is helpful. And I'm just going to close up my spices. Alright, so now because it's still a little warm, I'm going to take this with one hand and just mix all this in here like so. And this is the part, like I said, where you improvise. I add butter. I just don't like drinking milk. But I love butter. And mashed potatoes, homemade mashed potatoes, they need butter. I'm sorry. They just do. It creates a nice consistency. And I grew up in a house where my mom, my one of her uh, rules for all things cooking was when in doubt, add another stick of butter and it'll taste better. Ah, and then here's some pepper. So oh, we're going to get some pepper in here. Not too much, because I want to taste it and see how it is. Um, there we go. I'll get this all stirred up. And now, I'm going to take my mixer and mix it up. And I turned my heat off, so I'm going to turn it back on. Because I'm going to add the peppers and onions. Ah, the peppers and garlic. I did it again. Okay. Clicked it in. There we go. Clicked 
go. This is to hold the side of the pot. of my almond milk. And you can add other things in here, like um, I've done cheese before, so that's really good for a cheesy garlic mashed potato. Oh yeah, now these are looking good. Because of the, um, the cumin and the paprika, they look very, um, kind of like tan potatoes, not like the generic fluffy white potatoes, but still good. onions mix and I'm going to turn the heat back on and cook them for about three to four minutes right after I get done mixing it all in here. Now the reason you do that is because garlic and onion has a very distinctive flavor and if you let it cook it will incorporate into the mashed potatoes. So, I'll show you what we have thus far. Yeah, they look pretty good. And I may add more butter. Now, because at this point, everything's incorporated and there's not water in the bottom, I stir these pretty, pretty regularly for a couple minutes. But then that's just about it. And then I can move on to the next thing. And, uh, and then in the end, when we're all done, I'll show you how to meal prep it all. Again, I'm going to hold this side because it does heat up. And I don't want my potatoes to burn. And based on the look of them, I'll probably add a little bit of butter to um, the rest of the butter, actually. <laughs> just because of how I like my potatoes, but you can really do it however. At this point, when they're all mashed, it comes down to a consistency preference. So if you add butter, um, when you make yours, you'll probably have heavy cream you're using, or half and half instead of um, almond milk. I'm not going to lie, part of the reason I used almond milk, um, A, it's a preference. Tony's lactose intolerant, so it helps everybody if I use almond milk. And B, um, I had no more heavy cream because of the cake I baked yesterday. So, you know, you use what you can, but there are ways to improvise. Yesterday when I was baking, the recipe called for, uh, vinegar. I didn't have vinegar, so instead I used lemon juice. And so, you know, you do what you can. And now while that's heating up, I'm just gonna put the rest of the stick of butter right in here. Mm -hmm. And this, uh, this is salted butter, which is good. 
yesterday, you may recall, I did not use salted butter. That's because I was making frosting. And you don't really want salty frosting unless you're making like a salted caramel cake or something, which doesn't sound bad, but anyway, normally it's not something you'd want. So I'll let this go for a couple more minutes and and then taste test and then add seasonings accordingly. Again, I, I have a spicy house. Um, we both like spices. We are not afraid of them. So, uh, but yeah, at this point, everything is according to your flavor or your preference. But the nice thing about this is when you meal plan, um, potatoes, you can put it in Tupperware and, uh, and they just make a nice side dish to, to pretty much anything that you're making. Alrighty. I'd say these are pretty good. So, let's try them. Yeah, those are pretty good. I know how I like them, so I'm going to add some adobo to the mix. And what else do I want to add? This is where you can really get creative. Um, but you know what? I have cumin. And paprika. I might add a splash of chili powder. Paprika is a good flavor. Let me add a little more. And then obviously some traditional garlic and onion. And for fun, I may just mix in some Parmesan that I have there. Why not? So there's that. There's that. Because uh, this will give it more of a salty flavor. That's what cheese does. And everybody likes cheese. use my mixer once more just to make sure everything is well incorporated but yeah these guys are done yeah I like them use a touch more pepper and salt Remember, it's 10 potatoes, so we can sometimes soak up a lot. I'll do that. Better to be sparing with your seasoning and then just keep adding. Those are good. So then they ended up looking like this. And so now our homemade mashed potatoes are done. Nice job, guys. So now I'm just going to take this and set it aside over here for a minute. Alrighty. Yeah, so those are good. And, um,. I think I will clean up and then show you the next part, which will be um, 
prepping meals for later in the week and then I'm obviously going to make the pork tenderloin that'll go with this and uh, and so you can see how that goes too because again it's important to learn how to do just some basic cooking and um, it, it helps you take care of yourself and stay healthy all right so hold on a second hey guys all right I'm back so I had to clean up my dishes and so now we are all clean and ready to go again you have to wash everything down make sure it's uh, sanitized for uh, the next use so what I'm gonna do now is show you how to meal prep for the week with um, you can either use it for dinners or for lunches but thinking ahead when you have free time helps when you don't so like for instance tonight I know I'm gonna be busy and I won't have time to make dinner and so if that's the case um, if I meal prep earlier in the week I can just pull stuff out of my freezer and um, and then just heat it up and then I don't have to worry about it so I am going to make cauliflower rice and I'm not actually going to make it, I'm just going to prep all the ingredients beforehand so that way when I do want to make it, um, I have time. Because a lot of times prep takes a long time and you would be surprised. So just cutting that stuff out of the equation, it saves you like 10-15 minutes and when you're in a hurry, you need that time. So what I'm going to do is I sliced the rest of that uh, onion that I had. And I'm just going to pop it on into my food processor. Now I have a super tiny food processor, so I'll probably be doing two... Uh, well, I might be able to fit everything. Nah, you know, I probably shouldn't. Because I also have the rest of my garlic. Alright, so once I have all that in my food processor, again, you have to line up the bubble on the lid with the bubble on the little teeny tiny food processor. Alrighty. And I shake it. And the reason why I shake it is just so that way um, as I'm going, um, if there's any large chunks they will hopefully go down to the bottom. So now I have that done. I'm going to put that into my little bowl that I have prepared. And using a food processor just helps make all this go so much quicker. I wish I had a larger one, but that's a conversation for uh, another time. <laughs> Let's get the back in. Alright, so now I can get the rest of these guys in here along with my garlic cloves that I just sliced. I didn't, uh, I kind of have them, um, but I did not mince them like I did last time because this food processor will do that for me. So now that that's all done, I'll pour the rest in here. And now, again, this is to save me time during the week. And also to help things not go bad, because sometimes your vegetables will go bad if you don't use them right away. But if you still want vegetables, then um, prepping them ahead of time and then freezing them just helps make things easier. So now I'm going to take my head of cauliflower that was starting to turn a little brown, which I did not want to happen. And, uh, and we're going to trim it up. So I took this knife, which I washed, and I am going to just break apart the bottom and cut off the stem. Next, before you do anything, you want to wash it. If there's, if there's a chance you're putting it in your mouth, you want it to be clean. So 
Alrighty. And that works. And this works for broccoli as well, if you like broccoli. Some people don't like any of it. But you know what? I guess I subscribed to my mom's uh, saying that as long as you, you know, cover it in butter, everything can taste good. In cauliflower, part of the reason I want to show you how to do these things is because just using a couple added ingredients, it can be much healthier for you than, um, you know, processed flour or um, sometimes even rice. Tony is a type 1 diabetic, and so knowing how to make cauliflower rice is, uh, it can be better for you. So what I'm doing is I'm just slicing up the cauliflower. It doesn't really matter how I do it. I just want them to get small enough because I'm going to stick them right in my food processor and I'm going to process it. And, uh, oops. See, that is another reason why <laughs> you uh, clean your sink out as you go. Otherwise, you end up with fresh produce on dirty dishes and that's nasty. <laughs> So what I'm going to do is, as I'm done, I'm going to put my mix, I have my uh, my garlic and onion there, and I'm going to put my cauliflower in the bowl, and then I'm just going to divide it up amongst some Tupperware containers, and stick it in my freezer. And that way, when I'm in a hurry one night, I can just pull it out throw it on the stove and I'll have uh, some cauliflower rice ready in a couple minutes as opposed to having to take the time to do this by hand. Alrighty, now let's see, did I fill it up too much? When you're using a food processor, consistency is key. So when I'm making cauliflower rice, I don't want there to be a whole bunch of huge chunks. So I just open it up and take any of the big chunks I see out and just scoop the rest right into the bowl. And uh, full disclosure, Cauliflower smells bad at first when you're uh, cutting it, but once you uh, cook it, it smells amazing. Not to mention, it can be great for uh, yeah, for pretty much anything if you like. But cover it in some cheese, add some garlic and a little bit of onion in there. And uh, you have this cheesy cauliflower rice that's um, it's very good. I, I made it for my parents, well, before quarantine happened. And, uh, you know, they're old school Italian where, uh, you know, they don't like any of that makeshift stuff like give me carbs or give me death kind of thing. And, um, and they loved it. So if you have the right ingredients, you can make anything tasty. But besides, you know, one of the reasons why I made the transition to this type of a lifestyle um, is, you know, because I have uh, heart disease in my family. And so making little little efforts to um, just change not everything you don't have to be drastic about it like I am but just little efforts to do things can um, really make a difference in your quality of life so I love carbs and you know um, desserts and breads and I mean there's nothing quite like a good you know roll I'm not gonna pretend that uh, a keto roll comes close in any way, but for some of the other stuff, it's just a nice healthy alternative so I can 
have uh, that role. Like, I have a bagel place that's right next to me. And, in my opinion, they have the best bagels in the city. Balsam Bagels, people. Remember the name, because they are amazing, and they make their bagels fresh every night, and I smell them, and they are amazing, but sometimes you just need to have a bagel, and so by having healthy options, you know, you can have that bagel, so to speak. <laughs> then again, this is more just for thinking about nutrition as, as you get older, just to be aware of what we're putting in our body. Yeah, we are just about done. This is the last little bit of cauliflower. And that should fill up my Tupperware containers I set out pretty nicely. Now, I'm not going to be able to fit that, so I'm just going to grind this up really quick. see sometimes making cauliflower rice can be a little bit of a mess <laughs> but it's worth it oh and while I'm thinking of things that are worth it I'm just going to once I'm done here I'm just gonna reach behind me and preheat my oven cuz uh, I'm gonna throw that pork tenderloin in so I'm going to preheat the oven to 375, so that's on now, it'll take a while when you're using an older oven for things to heat up, and it's super easy. I just throw the pork loin into a glass baking dish, cover it with um, some foil, I'll sometimes also throw um, you know, some oil or a sauce or something in there with it. Well, that's a personal preference, and you certainly don't need to do that if it already comes with a sauce in it, which mine does. Okay. That's going to be a big chunk, and I'm using a little teeny tiny thing. And that was just enough. I have one perfectly filled small bowl of cauliflower and onion and garlic. So now, as always, first thing I do is I clean up all my loose ingredients that I have. Because sometimes with this stuff, it it can just make a mess. And I don't know if you guys have a garbage disposal, but I don't. <laughs> and so, um, try to clean up what you can. It just makes your life easier down the road. And in there, alright, now that my surface is cracked a little bit, I'm going to throw that in there. I will clean up the rest after, but you are not here to see me clean up my kitchen. So next, I take out a couple of containers. I really enjoy using uh, 
Chinese food containers because um, some of them are actually made pretty well. You'd be surprised. Alright, so then I'll take this and using a fork because I should probably not try to be an animal. <laughs> I will put some cauliflower rice divided up in between these two bowls. And now I get to the garlic and onion that was in the bottom. And so I'll just start mixing that in a couple forkfuls at a time just so it's divided up nicely. And by doing this I have saved myself time and a whole head of cauliflower. Because it's in an airtight container so it won't go bad if it's frozen. Oh. I guess now is the time to bring up one more thing. When, if you're cooking and uh, even if I have a 24 hour dish policy so after I get a dish done it has to go and be washed in 24 hours because I don't like a mess. A good rule of thumb is just clean up as you go. But if you're in a hurry and you can't do that, at least rinse it out with water. Um, that helps so that way if you're cooking or something, you know, the material doesn't get stuck to the bottom of whatever it is you're doing. So now I have two perfectly good containers of cauliflower rice. They're good to go. So if you can see, I'll just throw it in my freezer. And that is a lot cheaper than going to the store and buying pre-made cauliflower rice, let me tell you what. Alright, and so now, let's check and see the status of this oven. Uh, if you have a gas oven, if you've ever had a gas oven, then you know what I'm doing. I am checking underneath to see if the flame is still going. And it is. And so, that's not going to work. So... It's not ready yet. What I can do though is take my knife and open this pork loin. So I love these. I get these at Aldi and they're relatively inexpensive which I also like. <laughs> you open the side, and usually you just slide that guy right out onto your deep baking dish, which I have done. And always stop to read the instructions on the back, because why not? So this is cook to 160. Oh, I lied. Maybe I got it wrong. Chicken's 140. My bad. Or chicken is 180. My bad. <sighs> um, well, I didn't think so. Anyway, I'll come back to it later. Alrighty, so you want to cook it for 30 to 35 minutes per pound. So how many pounds was this guy? This was one and a half pounds. So this guy will probably be in there for about an hour. Um, obviously I won't make you watch my oven the entire time. That would be ridiculous. Let's see. And again, you're using the resources you have because I don't want to have to go to the grocery store. So, I don't really have um, any sauce to cook this with right now. So, no big deal. What I'm going to do is just put a little bit of water in the dish. Just so you, it helps it cook. 
and stay moist. And you can use, you know, whatever. Um, chicken broth is really great for that. If I had thought about it, I probably would have made chicken broth. But I didn't, so here we are. And covering your baking dish with foil helps it cook faster. Or helps it get up to temperature. And then at the end, when you're done, remove the foil for a couple minutes and it'll help it get all nice and crisp up. Now, mine already came with a prepared sauce, so I didn't really need to add anything to it. If yours doesn't, it's just the meat, then you're going to want to add some sauce. Alright, and that little light on is in the back. And so now I am good to go. I can stick that in the oven. Alrighty. And now I'll take out my phone. Set my alarm for... What time do I want to set my timer for? About an hour. I'll check it. Oh wait, you know what I'll do actually? What I'm going to do is I'm going to set it for half an hour. That way I can check and see if it needs more water. Then I can flip it and add a little bit more so it stays moist. Alright, and so we are set for half an hour. So I will clean up the kitchen again. And then um, pull out some more Tupperware. Because then I'm going to wrap up my potatoes and my tenderloin. Meal prep those and stick them in the fridge. And then I'm meal prepped for the rest of the week, for at least a couple meals. So, thanks for uh, staying tuned with me, guys.